Hey guys, it is CC Garland here again with you. Today, we are going to talk about how to accurately estimate repairs on your wholesale deals. Now, I know this is a topic that took me a while to learn in addition to generating my offers and sort of calculating the ARV. All of it goes hand in hand together. But this part is very essential to do because this will allow you to confidently make offers and also present the deals to your investors, your cash buyers confidently as well. So I wanted to just make this video about how to determine your repairs accurately. I don't go and see any properties. I virtually wholesale. I treat my hometown like it's a virtual market. I don't see any properties. I don't even see the pictures. The only reason why I get pictures is when I'm either about to contract a property or have already contracted it and I'm ready to push it out to my buyers. So I don't need the pictures. One thing that is very important to know is that you want to get as much information from the seller that you can. Now, unless the property is fire damage or has a hole coming through the roof or has water damage, you could probably accurately get within five to 10% of what the repair costs will be without even seeing the house. All of these houses, especially if they're built past the 1960s, are the same. You know, you're not going to encounter anything that's completely different in South Carolina than you will in New Jersey, or than you will in Boston, or California, or Texas, and the list goes on. What really matters is the years that the properties are built in. So I have two groups. I have a post-1960 group. So I calculate my repairs a certain way for those houses. And then anything before 1960, I look at a little bit different. Once you get older than like 50 and 60 years old for a house, uh, there, there's different issues that come up. So in the 1950s and 60s, lead paint was allowed. Also, asbestos was allowed. I'm not saying the houses you're looking at have asbestos or lead paint. However, there could be residual effects of those uh, properties in your houses that you're looking at. So you need to keep that in mind. Also, two properties built in this time frame have different floor plans. I see a lot of two ones and I see a lot of three ones. Post 1960, I see more of three twos, four twos, meaning uh, four bedrooms, two baths, three bedrooms, three baths, and three bedrooms, two baths. So the floor plans change. Also, the square footage changes. So I look at those houses completely different and I really don't calculate those repair estimates the same. Now, when we get to the 1800s and 1900s, you are going to be in for a lot of different surprises. <laughs> and I say that in quotes because they are not good surprises when you go and you're looking at estimating these repairs. I know in my hometown of Charleston, downtown Charleston, a lot of the homes were built in the 1800s and early 1900s. You're looking at over $100 per square foot to renovate these houses. In addition to that, you have got to go to the architectural review board and make sure whatever you are repairing on your house and adding to your house falls in line with the code that the review board has laid out. So it can get pretty high when it comes to calculating the repair estimate and repairing homes that are built in that time frame. So truthfully, we can put probably the repair estimates in three chunks. Anything between 1800 and let's say 1930, 1930 to 1960, and then 1960 to the present day. So there's three phases there. Most of the areas where my joint venture partners are located, all of the houses are built after 1960. And if any are built before then, there aren't any red flags that come off far as the structural components in the house that make me think that it'll take a lot more to repair the houses. So let's go ahead and go into how I would calculate the repairs on a few properties. But before we do that, let's talk about a few general rules of thumb. So you don't have to be perfect at this. When I started, this was actually a big hindrance of mine with confidently presenting offers to sellers. I literally went on bigger pockets and got a book that was like 200 pages on how to calculate repairs and how to flip properties. 
It was ridiculous. You know, I was typing out scopes of work. I was getting rehab calculators. I was trying to figure out how much all of this will cost if I looked at a property and to accurately gauge how much the repairs would be. But then I think I saw a YouTube video or maybe somebody's comment on bigger pockets. And also when I went to the RIAs, it validated this. So I went to my real estate investment association group locally where I was at the time in Fayetteville. And everybody was saying, hey, you don't have to be perfect with the repair estimates. If you do it based on the square footage and you attribute a dollar amount to that, you could get pretty close. It's your rehabber or cash buyer's job to go in and actually get his scope of work and itemize how much each thing will cost to repair. So we don't need to be perfect. We're not rehabbers. We just need to know based on the area and based on the year that it's built, how much the repairs will cost. So please, please, please do not overanalyze this. Do not let this be a hindrance. But you do want to be good at this so you can confidently generate offers and present offers to sellers. Because if you don't, then your competition is going to beat you because they are going to be confident in their numbers. So that's one real important thing to keep in mind. And we already touched on the, the years built. So just keep in mind that if the houses are built in a certain time block, like the three time blocks that I just mentioned, then you're going to look at those properties the same. You want to compare apples and apples, not apples and oranges. So if you see in your RIA meeting that somebody said it cost them $30 per square foot to repair their house, and you sort of start applying that to your numbers, they may be talking about a completely different part of town. So it's important to know the year that it was built. So year built and square footage is very, very, very important. So let's go ahead and go to Zillow. And honestly, I'm going to just start generating some repair estimates of houses I've never even seen before. And I bet you I'll probably get pretty close to what the true repair estimates are. Now, there's no way to validate this because I didn't buy the homes or wholesale them. But just based on the area, I could get a general rule of thumb. But based on the location and the years that the properties were built, I can get pretty close and accurately say what the property's repairs are. So I have a property that I input it here. And it is in a part of town in Charlotte that's seeing some, uh, some improvements. But, you know, a lot of homes are being flipped in. Property values aren't really high, but they're not low either. They're about in the middle. So I'm going to just click around here. All right, so here's a very cookie cutter property. It was built in 1938. But see, this is a property that was built in 1938, yet it looks very familiar to a lot of properties that were built in 1950 and 1960. Although the square footage is a little bit lower and it's a 2-1, which is typical during this time frame. So let's look at it. One thing I always do is look at the street view. Looking at the street view gives you a good indication of what the overall condition of the property is. This is actually in really good condition. I can tell from the outside, maybe in the last 10 years, they used some paint and they repaired the roof. Uh, the roof looks very smooth. If the roof wasn't new, then it would actually be very faded or gray or have a lot of um, just signs of wear and tear on it. So it looks like whoever lives here probably have made updates themselves over the years. So it looks like it's in decent condition. However, with being a wholesaler, you want to offer these people what it will cost to do a complete renovation. It doesn't matter if the seller renovated the house last year or two years ago. I can guarantee they did not renovate it the way that a rehabber would. So a lot of your sellers will come at you and say, oh, well, Mr. Wholesaler, I did this, that, and the third to the property over the last 10 years, five years, three years. Okay, that's great, Mr. Seller. However, buyers these days want a certain type of house and they want it to look a certain type of way. They want backsplashes, hardwood floors, neutral paint, neutral carpet. They want it to look a certain way. And I bet you if you go in these houses, one wall is going to be red. Another wall is going to be pink. Another wall is going to be green. The carpet might be yellow. Now, it'll look nice. 
meaning that it, it doesn't look trashy. It looks like somebody could live in it, but it's not ready to be sold on the retail market for top dollar. So a lot of, of your sellers might want you to come in and just do what they haven't done before. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't matter if they did all these repairs a year ago. Your catch buyer is going to go and renovate it the way they want it renovated and the way that they know the market wants it renovated, not the way that the people that live in this house have the house looking. So please keep that in mind. We don't go and we don't do patchwork after sellers. <laughs> no, if they renovated it themselves, then your cash buyer will have to go in and do the repairs on it and just pretty much just tear everything they did down and rebuild it up. So in a house like this, I see it's been maintained over the years. So there looks like there might be some foundation issues here. Anytime you see cracking on the exterior or on the or in the interior, then that's a huge red flag that there's foundation issues. And foundation issues can be a deal breaker for your cash buyers. Let me tell you now, I've had some deals fall through because foundation issues have come up. And honestly, foundation issues could range anywhere from like a thousand bucks, maybe lower, to all the way up to $20,000. But just the unknown and not knowing what they're dealing with until they jack the home up and look underneath it or either start renovating it, that's enough to scare them away because it can open up a whole Pandora's box. It's just like with termites. You know, termites could cost anywhere from 500 to just rebuild a part of the house. Maybe you just need to replace some plywood or you might be looking at replacing the whole structure of the house. So investors aren't willing to take that gamble. So those are red flags that they wanna stay completely away from. Now, every house has a dollar amount that it'll sell for. So if that's the case, you have to be very conservative with your offer. And we'll talk about this in another video with how we go about determining our offers based on the ARV and what I'm discussing now, which is estimating the repairs. So a house like this, honestly, I would put at $15 per square feet. Anything underneath a thousand square feet, I actually might go up to $20 per square feet because the repair estimate is gonna be really low here. So let's do some math. 864 times 15. Yeah, so $12,000 is probably not enough to get the job done. So what I'm gonna do is actually see how much it'll be if I do $20 per square feet. 17,000, so I could see this probably being anywhere from 15,000 on the low end to 20,000 on the high side, just because the house was built in 1938. We wanna be very, very conservative with our repair estimates, especially with houses that are built before 1960. And as I told you here, you see a little crack right here. I mean, and you see, honestly, this is slanted. So this isn't level with the house. So what this tells me right here is this is a foundation issue. We're unsure of the extent of it, however, this is a red flag right here. So I may even be a little bit more conservative and add on $5,000 as a repair estimate, which puts me at $22,000. That may seem like a lot for a house that's 800 square feet, but truthfully, they're probably going to need new appliances. Uh, the roof is probably okay. The HVAC will probably need to be replaced. This paint is a little bit dated, like the color scheme here is brown and yellow so that'll be need to be replaced uh, and then probably on the inside it's dated as well so that's what i would put the repair estimate as around twenty two thousand dollars let's look at another one i'm going to look at a different part of the country okay this is a good example right here so let's see what the street view looks like okay so here here are some red flags for you guys so right here, guys, we can see that the roof is very old. It's dated. It looks about 20 years old and it's the color is very off on it. So it's not deep black. Usually your shingles will be dark black, but it's black here, it's gray here, it's faded. And also the vinyl siding is warped on the bottom right here. 
you have some of the vinyl siding coming off. And the color is just off and, you know, the garage looks dated. This just looks like a beat up house. It, it just, it just needs some work. So an indication, like I said before, that the house needs work is if the exterior looks like this, I could probably anticipate the interior looks very dated as well. So let's take a look inside here. Okay, hardwood floors. So this is dated, this wood paneling. This house was probably built in the 60s or 70s. That was popular back then. Let's go ahead and see. So 1957. So they replaced the hardwood floor here, some paint, dated. Okay, this is very dated right here. This towel, that screams 70s right there. Yeah, this room, the wood paneling and how the hardwood floor looks and how they have this little box <laughs> thing right here. Ah, oh, man. Usually what will happen in houses like this, investors would just, they would just like knock down this wall and make it more open. Yeah, the bathroom's dated. So your big ticket items that need to be replaced is your roof and your bathroom. So let's go ahead and see what our repair estimate will be for this. 1264 times, um, let's do $15 per square feet. So about $18,000 is what we're looking at. I would probably tell my buyer $20,000. I don't get that detailed with my repair estimate far as down to the dollar amount with my buyer. I usually give them a round number that's easy to work with. So if it's a property that doesn't need any repairs, if a tenant's been living in it and it might just need paint and carpet, I'll probably do five to $10,000. Something like this, I'll just round up to 20K. You know, there's no need to say 18,960. Hey, we're looking at about 20K in repairs is what they need. And, and that's honestly what they'd anticipate for it. Because even if it's 18,000, you wanna round up and allow them to have a little buffer room to play with. And if you overestimate the repairs, that's great. Because guess what? That leaves them with more profit and they're gonna love you. So always come in very conservative when it comes to your repairs. You don't wanna make the numbers work to make the deal work. I've done that before. <laughs> you don't wanna push deals out there to buyers thinking that they're going to just contract the deal and not do their own due diligence. No, these buyers are not stupid. That's a good way to ruin your credibility. So make sure you're not doing that. And another good thing about using this formula is it's going to put you about 5% over anyway of what the repair estimate will be. If a contractor is knocking these properties out day in and day out like this, they're going to have the materials already in bulk. They're already going to have their crew at the lowest price they can get them. So really when you do the repair estimates, you're doing it as if a rehabber is coming in and they're getting charged top dollar for labor. They're getting charged top dollar for materials and things of that nature. So doing this formula actually puts you in a better position when you're presenting your offer. And to be honest, the way that I'm calculating repairs and showing you how to do it, this is what your buyers are going to do when these deals come across your desk. I get hundreds of leads that come across my inbox every single week. And we need to be able to accurately and quickly gauge what the repairs are. So we can't spend a lot of time analyzing properties because that will just take up so much time and resources. And this is a quick and dirty way that actually works. And you're able to apply in your market, really in any market, and get a gauge on what the repair estimates will be. So guys, I really hope this video helped you out. In the next video, we are going to be talking about how to put this all together. So how we determine the ARV, the repairs, and how we generate our offer from those two things. And you'll see how it ties in all together. But thanks so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to message me. I look forward to teaching you guys some more valuable information on wholesaling. Thanks.